Good morning and welcome to worship on this glorious Easter morning. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. It, it is wonderful to have you all here this morning. Just a few announcements before we begin. Church Council will meet this coming Thursday for our regularly scheduled April meeting at 6.30. It will be on Zoom. That information will go out later this week. If you are not on council and would wish to attend, please just let me know and we will get you the Zoom code. A few other notes for the week. Um, beginning tomorrow, I will be on vacation and will be out of town through next Sunday. So if you would happen to have any pastoral emergencies, please just get in touch with Cindy at the office and they will be able to um, get that directed for pastoral support. As well, Pastor Richard Jorgensen, the Director for Evangelical Mission at the Synod Office, will be here next week to preach um, in my absence, and we are grateful for him being here with us. There will be no Bible study, prayer group, or Sunday school um, next Sunday uh, with me being gone either, um, so everyone will uh, have a bit of a rest and respite from those events this week. It is the last week to get in your personal care kits uh, for Lutheran World Relief, so if you have put those together um, during the Lenten season, please bring those in, and we will begin uh, getting them boxed up and ready to go down to um, the Maryland drop-off site. On behalf of Joe, Lisa, and myself, we are grateful to the congregation for these lovely Easter baskets that you provided for us. We are grateful to be here and worshiping with you, so thank you very much for that. That concludes our announcements for this morning. We begin our worship with the prayer and with the confession for forgiveness. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn number 366.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing the first verse of hymn number 836.
I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. We read portions of Psalm 118 responsively together. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. And I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you for you have answered me, and you have become the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life.
gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Bones. 
We rejoice at this miracle that is the cornerstone of our faith. We love to hear this story because it is powerful and life-changing. So you wouldn't be wrong if when you read the end of Mark's Gospel, you were wondering, where is the rest of it? What do you mean the women fled and told no one? That's not how the story ends. Well, except that is how Mark's Gospel ends. Sort of. It is quite a mystery. Scholars and theologians and linguists and literary experts have spent countless years debating just what is going on at the end of Mark. If you were to pull out your Bibles, you see that there are additional verses that come after verse 8, which we heard today, that tells the rest of the story. But you'll also see a footnote that tells you that these verses are not included in the most ancient of the manuscripts for Mark. So it seems that these extra verses were added later when other believers, just like us, said that can't be how the story ends. So some people think that there may have been a different ending for Mark and it's been lost. Others look to these later manuscripts for their answers. And others think this ending is what Mark intended. It's a mystery that we may never resolve. But that does not leave us abandoned to silence. This story of joy and salvation cannot be contained by the initial terror and amazement of the women who first walked to the tomb that Easter morning. <clears throat> we know that while Mark tells us that they fled from the tomb and told no one, that can't be the whole story. And how do we know that? Because we are all here today. The news that Jesus Christ was raised from the tomb spread one way or another. It could be that once the women reached the room where they were staying, they finally collected it themselves and realized that they had to tell someone just as the divine messenger had told them. Or the news spread some other way by some other divinely appointed means. But however it was proclaimed, whoever was the first to tell the good news, the truth was there for all to see. The stone had been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Jesus was not there. Just as Jesus had told the disciples what seems like a lifetime ago, Jesus was dead, but had been raised. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. God's promise of salvation cannot and will not be contained by humanity's desire to control and contain God's purposes. We know that God can and will undo all that is wrong in this world. We experience at the cross that our God suffers with us at the pain and despair we experience as a result of the sin and brokenness of this world. But what the women discovered today is that God does not leave us there. Even when all seems lost and hopeless, God steps in and reminds us that there is always hope. Because God remains faithful and committed to us, even when it seems that all the forces and powers of this world are against us. In the stories of these great three days, we encounter events that might have led us to doubt this truth. Peter. 
the leader of the disciples, bold and brash, withers under his fear that he might be arrested too. His fear drives him to even deny that he ever knew Jesus, let alone declare him to be the Messiah. Pilate, one who never intended to be a part of this drama, because whether Jesus was a Jewish Messiah or not was mostly irrelevant to him, or so he thought. Pilate's encounter with Jesus leads him to seek answers from Jesus and question just who he was. Pilate senses more was happening here, that a deeper truth was at work. But he resisted the call to right this wrong, choosing instead to maintain his mirage of control and power as the Roman governor. Worldly concerns took precedence over the death of this one man. On Thursday and Friday, it seemed that fear and sin would win the day. As all the forces of evil converged, as they so often do, they wanted to overwhelm us with the idea of it, that their own power, trying to make us believe that this nonsense of love and service and sacrifice preached by Jesus is meaningless. The charade they created through the unlawful trial and condemnation and public execution were all meant to destroy the hopes of any who might have been Jesus' followers so that an end could be brought to this entire episode. The religious leaders thought they had found a way to contain him, to hold on to their power without any risk to the status quo. They believed that they had finally exposed Jesus to be the troublesome liar that they accused him to be. For the Messiah could most certainly never have been killed in such a manner. Human pride and arrogance blinded them to the truth. The truth that was revealed by a young divine messenger sent by God to proclaim that after all these things, the truth lives. The Messiah who once was dead now lives again. God the Creator is also God our Redeemer and God the Renewer of all. The one who created all that surrounds us can bring life to that which seems to be dead. The power of death has been destroyed. God's kingdom has been revealed through the work of Jesus Christ. Just as the women were, we too might find ourselves at a loss for words, wondering how it could possibly be that this was all true, just as Jesus said it would be. The powers of this world hold no power over God. When we pray those words Jesus taught us early in his ministry, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Today, we realize that those very words have come to pass. God's will has been done on earth. Through Jesus, God has revealed the kingdom to us. By Jesus' teaching, we know to whom we belong and who we must follow. We follow the one who seeks the goodness and welfare and salvation of all God's people. We are disciples of the Christ who would sacrifice himself for the sake of all the sins in this world, who has gathered everything and all into himself, gathered all of us under the outstretched arms of his crucified body and has given us shelter there. In him, he has promised 
that there is forgiveness of sins. Nothing about who we are or what we have done or what we will do separates us from this mercy and love. In the cross, where it seemed that only death remained, God intervened and told us with certainty the lies of this world cannot stand against the power of the most holy and majestic one. This is a miracle. It is full of grace given for us when we were filled with utter despair. We, just like the women, would have expected to find Jesus in the tomb. Just like the women, we would have been filled with shock, not daring to believe our own eyes because the world has told us that which is dead can never return to life. But we, like the women, may have run in fear, afraid to tell anyone lest they think we had lost our minds, are finally able to grasp the truth. And like the women, when this truth finally sinks in, our fear and amazement turn to joy and proclamation of this good news. He has been raised. He is not here. Now, go. People of God, share this good news. Remember all that Jesus has taught to us. Let it all come flooding back. For now the work is ours too. We join with the women and Peter and Mark to tell this story to all the world, for there is nothing more important. What Jesus taught us in his ministry is the good news. And being a people saved by the most profound and wondrous power of God, we join the saints in light, who will bring this good news to a world that needs it so badly. God sent Jesus to us for a reason. God sent Jesus for you. God showed us all that there is nothing that ever can or ever will separate the beloved creation from God's own hand. We belong to God. There's nothing more that we need to know. We are saved and life rests in that knowledge. We are saved and beloved and now it is our calling to be disciples out in this world that God loves so much that we may bring light and reveal the glory of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection to everyone. God's glory has been revealed in Jesus. Let us exclaim all of our days. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Together we sing our hymn of the day, number 377.
faith we confess in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became a truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O oh God. Be Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Especially, we pray for Doris, Shirley, Alan, Pastor Sharon, Mariana, Pat, Audrey, Sarah Jane, Joanne, Jesse, Marianne, Jonathan, Joe, Dennis, and Sandy. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Today is a day for joy and celebration. And in great joy, we share with others what God has first given us. The fruits of our salvation shall produce an abundant harvest for our risen Savior. Let us share our gifts 
for the sake of the whole world. We will worship now with our offering. Gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sins, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you.
We sing our Sending Hymn number 365. Church are God's called love, children of each other. Go in peace. 